Hello everyone, thank you for today's uh, second video doing USA forecast for the next uh, 10 to 14 days. So uh, we've got a lot going on in the Atlantic at the moment. There's no sign of anything heading towards the United States. We've got two disturbance areas, those yellow X's that you can see bottom uh, right hand corner of the chart. So uh, it's going to be a case of keeping an eye on those I suppose next week to see whether any of those move towards the uh, United States. More about whether for the next 10 to 14 days for US in a I uh, just say it's going to be a change coming up to the USA update. So I've been doing them twice a week on a Monday and on a Thursday for the past uh, couple of months. So uh, on a Monday night from next week, we're going to uh, stream the uh, second part of the winter update. So it's bringing winter updates at gazworthers.com up into two parts. Part one, part two, part one on a Sunday, part two on a Monday. Part two will be released on a Monday evening. So I won't have time to do the USA forecast on a Monday. So these are going to go once a week now. These will go once a week, and I will be releasing the USA forecast on a Wednesday uh, in the day before I live stream. So USA forecast will be once a week on a Wednesday, uh, and uh, that will be in the day in replacement, I suppose, of the five-day forecast. And, uh, and uh, yeah, that's going to be uh, in the day before the live stream on a Wednesday evening. Uh, right, so here we go then. I'm going to start off with the uh, situation with Tropic Atlantic. So we've got four disturbance areas. We've got two uh, yellow X's uh, just here. We've got a yellow X just there. We've got another yellow X just there. Uh, let's have a look at, at uh, that one first of all. So it's disturbance two with a 70% chance of cyclone information in the next uh, five days. That could become a trouble storm uh, next week. And then we've also got disturbance one with a 40% chance of cyclone formation in the next five days uh, as well. So we're going to have to watch both of those uh, through the course of next week, I think. Uh, heading further northwards, we've got Omar uh, up here. So uh, let's have a look at Omar. That was a tropical storm. It's now a tropical depression, giving maximum sustained winds of 35 miles per hour. This should soon be going uh, post-tropical. Here we go. So uh, it's a tropical depression at the moment. It becomes a post-tropical depression by the time we get through to tomorrow. And uh, then we have a uh, tropical storm Nana or Nana uh, just here giving 45 mile per hour maximum sustained winds somewhere around Guatemala and Mexico. Uh, this is what uh, this is what the system is forecast to do. So at the moment it is a uh, tropical depression going to move through the southern tip of uh, Mexico, northern tip of Guatemala, and out into the Pacific Ocean as a post-tropical depression. So at the moment, none of these systems are impacting the United States. But of course, those two disturbance areas uh, may develop into something next week and may head into the vicinity of uh, the USA. We don't know at this stage. We will need to wait and see. Uh, these are 500 bit of our height normally flow charts, Penn State University for the next uh, week to 10 days. We've got the uh, ECMWF on the uh, left, and the GFS is over on the right. So 500 bit of ours in area, in that's high pressure, low pressure, up being moved around by a jet seam running above. Redshirt effects, high pressure, blue to low pressure. So you can see that with the uh, with both of these models, actually, the ECM and the GFS got this ridge off the Pacific Northwest coast of America and Canada. They're both going for some sort of trough into the northern part of the state. So GFS is deeper and further south with that trough and then they both have a ridge off the northeastern uh, coast up here so essentially we're doing something like this with the flow and with the jet stream obviously like the GFS is dipping the jet stream further south because it's the cooler and more unsettled of the two options for those sort of central uh, and midwestern parts of America but they're both a little bit on the uh, cool and changeable side but but the GFS much more so I think than the ECM they both suggest like uh, a cool down certainly for northern parts of the states. Means of the uh, GFS upgrade temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks for uh, New York City. Uh, so red line is 30 year upper air temperature average for New York. We're starting off warmer now at the moment. Going to go cooler uh, in the next few days and then lifting back up to uh, warmer again as we go into the second week of September before hovering somewhere close to average. There's some rain to come in New York sort of later tomorrow and into uh, Saturday. Then pretty dry actually, quite dry for several Several days uh, until we get through to like the end of next week and on into the middle part of September, when it goes much, much more unsettled there with a large precipitation spikes.
Temperature anomalies uh, from the 3rd to the 11th of September. Warmer than average on the western side of the states around that Pacific coast and over on the east coast as well. In between those, through the Midwest, it looks pretty cool. It looks pretty cool through the Midwest and warmer on either side. Particularly hot, of course, on the west coast still. Very, very hot right the way up that west coast as it has been for several weeks. Now, precipitation anomalies look like that. So, a very dry out in the west from the 3rd to 11th of September. Very, very dry through there. Those Midwestern states look much more on south, so that's where the trough of low pressure is digging through, of course, through the Midwest. Pretty uh, pretty wet and quite cool there. Drier near the ridge uh, over on the East Coast. Drier and warmer over there. This is how the uh, GFS midday run is looking then. So this is for tomorrow, Friday. So uh, we've got this hot ridge over in the west. Of course, that still continues. Hot ridge continues in the west. There's a bit of an area of low pressure over Canada, or quite a deep area of low pressure over Canada that's trying to dig into northern parts of the states. As we run through, we see that uh, we get an area of low pressure developing across the northern parts of America, starting to push eastward. Still, it's very hot on the western side. It's pretty hot, actually, with this ridge, or certainly very warm, with the ridge over on the east coast. That's how the upper air temperatures are always so very hot still in the west. Southwest cooler air digging into the far north and pretty warm over on the eastern side as well. Now, how this resolves itself is that quite a deep area of low pressure then forms through the central parts of the states, starting to uh, push eastwards across America as well. But at the same time, got a ridge off the east coast start to draw up hotter air from the south, and obviously the west coast is still pretty hot too. Look at the upper air temperatures. This is for Thursday next week, a week away. So we've got three distinct uh, um, upper air temperature types. Very hot on the west coast still. Very, very hot through there. Autumn, fall, digging through the central states, beginning to heading towards the Midwest. But over on the eastern side, looking pretty hot with those southerly winds coming up from the Gulf of Mexico over on the eastern side. Uh, that area of low pressure probably bringing heavy rain and thunderstorms and transfers eastwards, cooler air pulling in behind it on the northern flank and then we get this ridge building as we go into sort of next weekend this weekend of 12th, 13th of September under this ridge of high pressure our rare temperatures are going a lot cooler so uh, that's how the upper air temperatures look by the 13th of September, which is day 10, across the east and the northeast, cooling down, but the, but still hot in the southwest. That heat's surging northwards again, actually, into some of those far northern states, trying to push back up into the border with Canada. As we move on into the extended range uh, with this particular GFS well, this area of low pressure deepens again uh, around the Great Lakes and starts to push southwards uh, once again. So the upper air temperatures are beginning to lower again in the north and the northeast. Another shot of cool air coming out of Canada into the north and the northeast. But all the time it remains hot over on the western side. The heat wave goes on uh, over on the west coast. So it continues uh, on the west coast. Whoops, we didn't want to go there. We want to go here. So uh, this is how the ECM looks in comparison. Again, very similar for tomorrow. There's an area of low pressure trying to dig in, dig in some rain and cool rate of a very far north. However, most parts of the states do actually look very warm uh, through the course of tomorrow. Into next week, so we're going to find this area of low pressure pushing eastwards. It'll be hot ahead of it and then turning much cooler behind it. Probably big uh, showers and thunderstorms as well digging in. That's how the upper air temperatures are looking. So heat surging northwards up the east coast and also very hot in the west. But in between it is much much cooler in between it's much cooler with the cool air digging down from canada around that area of low pressure we head on towards the end of next week and we're going to find this ridge developing across uh, east part states but it'll be quite a cool ridge so it brings autumnal sort of temperatures fall type temperatures with chilly nights but probably relatively warm days we finish up though by day 10 taking ridge back out onto the atlantic coast and starting to pull up hotter air from the south uh once again let's just have a quick look at the upper air temperatures at four day 10. That's how they're looking. So it remains very hot in the west and southwest, of course. And it's beginning to warm up through the Midwest and over onto the East Coast as well. Uh, CFSV2 uh, is looking like this. So uh, let's just zoom in just slightly. So uh, these are 500 bit of our heights break down to week periods. The first week period take us from the 3rd to the 9th of September. So uh, the coming week has the ridge out to the west and also to the east. So that's two areas that are very warm. Uh, warm sub layers up here, warm sub layers 
uh, up here. In between, though, we've got this trough of low pressure that's been careering from Canada into those uh, northern and midwestern states. Uh, very little change as we get through to meet, uh, week two, which is the 16th of September. A ridge again over in the east of the northeast and in the west. Low pressure in between. So, uh, yeah, it should be uh, quite cool and unsettling in the north to, uh, and in the midwest, but in between, relatively uh, warm and dry. Week three uh, looks like that, 17th, 23rd of September. Again, a ridge in the east of the southeast and out to the northwest. Trough of low pressure up here, bringing in autumnal conditions or fall conditions to the north. And then we finish up in week four, which is the 24th to 30th of September, under this ridge of high pressure, bringing a lot of dry weather to many parts of the state's temperature anomalies for uh, week one, uh, which is preferred to the 9th of September. Hot in the west, very warm to hot in the east of the southeast, in between really cool uh, temperatures digging in from Canada into the far north and some parts of the west. Look how that cool uh, how that cool weather surges southwards. Look at that. Really becoming very, very cool through the central and midwestern states. Over on the east coast, it's pretty hot, and in the west, it's pretty hot as well. But, but, but like the, the breadbasket of America, the heart of America, becoming very, very cool, very, very cool uh, as you go through to week two. Uh, it starts to warm up though for week three. This is the uh, this is going to be the 17th to 23rd of September, beginning to turn warmer across many parts of the states. Then most cool temperatures were seeding back up to Canada, and then we go through to week four, which is going to be the 24th to 30th of September again, warming up through many parts of uh, the states. So the second half of September could be warmer than the first half. Uh, rainfall anomaly is finally so uh, again western areas look quite dry the east and south east coast look quite quite dry in between it's uh, wetter through the midwest and up to the north week two is a 10th to 16th of september wet and average on the eastern side and up to the uh, northwest in between drier than average so where it's coolest it also goes driest uh, but i suppose there's a cool ridge digging down from the north of the high pressure digging down from the north through here's a trough of low pressure but brings the cool down and the cold front uh, spreads eastwards. Uh, right, week three is going to be the 17th, 23rd of September. A little bit wetter than average over on the eastern side, then a bit dry, but average up to the northwest. And um, then we get through to week four, which is the 24th to the 30th of September. And it's dry, but average in the northeast. Otherwise, it's near normal, uh, really, for rainfall then. Okay, so that's it for USA forecast uh, for this week. Whoops, there we go. That's it for USA forecast uh, for this week. Uh, so uh, we're going to be back with this on Wednesday now. So uh, it's not going to be Monday and Thursday. We're going to be releasing USA forecast once a week on a Wednesday. Have a look at weather for next week, 10 days. Obviously, if things, uh, something very interesting starts to happen, so if there's like a hurricane battering or a set batter of the states or, um, you know, if there's blizzards or something, I might up that a little bit. But at the moment, I am sort of going to be under the cosh with updates as we go into the autumn. And I don't think I've quite got time to do two USA updates a week. So uh, generally, USA updates will be once a week on a Wednesday in the day before I live stream in the evening. Uh, UK time, but uh, but if something is happening uh, that's very interesting, then I will try and slot in an extra USA update, of course. Okay, so the next scheduled USA update is going to be on Wednesday uh, next week, so come back for that. But uh, for this USA update, that's all for now, and thanks for watching.